Hi Sagittarius. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. I trust that when this video finds you, it's the perfect time for you. This is On The Journey 111 and I'm Al Rock, your hostess, and we're here to do your timeless, intuitive soul contracts and love reading. This is a monthly reading and we are going to take a look into your soul contracts and love. It is general, it is timeless, so if the story that comes out today isn't vibing with you, you might check out your other placements on the channel because we are reading for all placements for Sagittarius. So um, let's see, what else? Thank you and deepest heartfelt gratitude. For those of you who are new subscribers, returning subscribers, and all of you dropping by the channel to check it out, your participation on On The Journey helps the channel grow on YouTube. So thank you for being a part of it. I think that's it for the announcements. So let's dig in. Let's find out about your soul contract. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to dig into um, your purpose, your love's purpose, and then your joint purpose in the soul contract. If you want to know more about soul contracts, there's information in the description box. Um, I just always recommend that you kind of do your own research so that you, so that you can find what resonates uh, with your truth. So Sagittarius, what is your purpose in the soul contract with the person that you love, please? Your purpose. Wow, that went flying. You are not for everyone. Embrace your weirdness and face your true north. So Sagittarius, this is a um, place of acceptance about your uniqueness, about the fact that you are a snowflake and um, that something you are, your uniqueness plays a part in this. So whatever this is, you're not for everyone. You're being um, guided to embrace your weirdness and face your true north in the month ahead. So let's find out more about this. So your purpose in this soul contract is to be true to who you are, Sagittarius. What is your person's purpose in this soul contract with Sagittarius? Let's give that a shuffle. Clear the energy. Sagittarius's purpose in this joint soul contract. Sagittarius's person's purpose. Your person's purpose in this soul contract. There it is. Karmic relationships, Orion energy, polarity, soul growth, and conflict. So it looks like um, perhaps your uniqueness, um, it looks like between the two of you, the, the current relationship that you are in Sagittarius, uh, between the two of you, um, that it is karmic in nature, that what that means um, in terms of a soul contract is that there's probably a little more pain involved in this growth period with this person. And it has to do with you coming into who you are and embracing your uniqueness, knowing that there's somebody out there for you. Perhaps your uniqueness um, causes there to be a sense of worlds between you here, Sagittarius. This is Orion energy, polarity, soul growth, and conflict. So the conflict here is the soul growth that this person is... Um, that they're giving to you, um, for you, Sagittarius, to be able to grow into who you are and follow your compass um, and find your true north. So let's find out what your joint, um, let's shuffle those cards again. What is your joint purpose? What do you both bring into this soul contract for each other? What is your shared energy in the, in the contract, your joint energy in the soul contract?
perspective. So none of this matters. Zoom out and find your common ground. So your joint energy here is um, to gain perspective, both of you, uh, that it's okay that um, this is a growth relationship. Zooming out and understanding that this has provided you with contrast to number one, find your common ground, which is what you loved about each other in the first place, and to return to that and take an expanded perspective on this. So um, depending on the nature of the relationship, um, karmic relationships aren't always bad. Um, they don't always last forever. So I guess it would be, um, let's find out more about this. Let's dig into where you are in the cycle. Bottom of the deck is star family. You're part of a team of souls, call in support. So Sagittarius, I would say you're transmuting something in the next 30 days that you and your person are evaluating things from a new point of view, that your star family, your friends, your soulmates, the people who you love, that um, you can give your time and attention and your energy to, um, your star family is here. So where this is a little bit more karmic in nature and probably comes with more lessons and struggles and contrast in terms of personality individual wants, uniqueness, and perhaps having to compromise your uniqueness to um, try to gain acceptance. Um, but whatever this is, it's both been a growing experience for the two of you, and what you both brought to it is a new perspective, um, a level of common ground between the two of you. So interesting. All right, so Sagittarius, where are you in this cycle? This particular soul contract. Where are you in this cycle? Sagittarius, where are you in this cycle, please? Orphaned. Wow, yeah, Saggy, you're you're going through some heartache, it looks like, um, over the coming month and working your way through that you feel left behind um this conflict that um that their purpose to bring this conflict to grow your soul has left you feeling abandoned so where you're at in your cycle is a sense of abandonment and and feeling orphaned where is your person at Unfinished Symphony. Interesting. So where they're at is they're in the soul growth area. So Unfinished Symphony. Is there some sort of a reunion of friendship perhaps or something for something for them is not finished here. Um, so let's find out. We'll find out more about that. Um, let's. What is your shared... What's your shared energy in the cycle here? Sagittarius is shared energy with their person in this cycle. Let's take a look at it. Between worlds, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Let's get one more though that flies. All right, there it is. All right, yeah, breathe. I was doing that when I was shuffling the cards. So let's do that right now. Let's take a breath in. And release. You're in pain right now, Saggy. I can feel that. Let's take another breath. So that soul light back there is trying to come in. You're here on your little giant lily pad, little giant. <laughs> That's an oxymoron, isn't it? On your giant lily pad, um, just floating in the stars. Uh, this perspective, you, you are in between worlds. There is an unfinished symphony. So I might expect that your person could potentially be returning um, in some form of fashion. 
But right now your energy is one of being orphaned and your shared energy is that you both are between worlds. And, um, you know, one of you is a little bit darker and perhaps one of you is a little bit in the lighter. But whatever it is, this, this energy of taking a breath, of meditation, of going within, of allowing the lessons that, that you are learning from this interaction between the two of you. Um, Sagittarius, you, you're coming in with that energy of not for everyone. So there's something here that you're trying to decide about um, whether or not perhaps this is worth it for you. And then at the bottom of the deck, we have no place like home. So um, Sagittarius, I'm guessing um, it'll be interesting to see what comes out in the tarot. But you have star family here, which is you're part of a team of souls, call in support, and there's no place like home. So you've got soul tribe, you've got soul family here that you can spend time with, um, you know, that might have some, some good insights or advice, or if nothing more to get your mind off of it, to move out of this energy, because when you're stuck in the energy between worlds, it's hard to enjoy the light of home here. It's hard to be grateful for everything that you already have and you are fully abundant. You may be kind of out here hanging on this little, you know, this little birdhouse, you know, in its solo arena, but that doesn't make it, that doesn't make it bad. It just makes it, it's, it's home. And to dig into that energy is a really positive thing to do right now. Um, because of that sense of being orphaned. And when you can call in your soul family, your star family here, that will get you out of that sense of being lost, of feeling abandoned. You have people who love you, and those are the people that you're being guided to really focus your attention on um, right now. So let's dig in a little bit more here. Sagittarius, let's find out why you're feeling orphaned here. Sagittarius, why are you feeling orphaned? Whew. All right. Um, the Queen of Pentacles uh, perhaps took away the sun. Um, so we've got the energy of the Queen of Pentacles here. She's grounded. She's earthy. She's um, She is a mother figure, but she's a mother figure who might be focused a little bit more on material things. And then we have the sun energy here, the happiness. And so I'm wondering if, you know, perhaps this is something where somebody is focused on more material pursuits versus perhaps spiritual pursuits, I'm wondering, um, or vice versa. You are pursuing um, material items and the other person is not. So whatever it is where it's you're not for everyone, there's a fundamental difference between you that is... Um, that's grounded differently because the Queen of Pentacles is... You know, she's she's very structured. She's, you know, perhaps a business professional. Um, and yet she's well managed in her home environment as well. So this really feels like a sense of, um, you know, former gra of what was once groundedness. So, um, you know, these are happy times that seem to have left you feeling orphaned for some reason because your garden um, is pretty kind of dreary compared to what it once was. So let's get a couple more cards for that. Wow, that was way more than I wanted, but that's probably a storyline. The bottom of the deck, we've got Temperance. So let's see what came out here. Ace of Wands, Passionate New Beginnings towards a Ten of Pentacles, which is groundedness in the home environment. And then the Hierophant, which is... Um, you know, spiritual teaching. And then we've got nine of swords being caught up in your head about something with the passion of the queen of wands from the past. So 
there was going to be a new beginning, um, perhaps a higher level of commitment of some sort, and um, something changed with that. Um, something in the mind space, something, something that was a differentiator between the two of you. Um, one of you is coming through with the passion of the wands energy of pursuits. Um, you know, looking back at the past here. Um, so whatever it is, um, I feel like, like your person is the queen of wands energy just because is that your person or is that you? Let's see what comes out with their cards. Um, but whatever it is, it was a passionate new beginning towards a grounded home life with that Ten of Pentacles um, that didn't happen for some reason with the Nine of Swords. So um, why didn't that Nine? Why didn't that? What happened here? Okay, yeah, somebody stood their ground about a Four of Wands situation. So... I think that um, somebody, it could have been you that stood your ground um, with this, but the seven of wands is here that you, um, somebody was held, was holding a position about a four of wands that is in the reverse. Somebody doesn't want that four of wands. And a lot of people are pointing, um, pointing fingers or pointing wands and putting somebody on the defense here. That could be you. It could be you doing that to your person, but whatever it is, the conflict, the reason for the nine of swords here is because um, somebody was defending a position about not being committed here. And I would say that that's probably good that somebody held that position. It put you into a dark place because this is somebody from your past here, somebody that you had, you had a lot of love with. Um, but this holding the position is, I mean, the four of wands upright is celebration. It's higher levels of commitment. Um, you don't want it because it looks to be karmic. So it's actually, and maybe you already know this, maybe you walked away from it for that reason, but whatever it is, um, you know, You'll have to decide whether or not you do want to fight for it because we do have an unfinished symphony over here. So let's find out where your person is at. Maybe they're in a karmic relationship and you're not the karmic, but um, let's find out. What's going on with Sagittarius's person here? With karmic relationships and unfinished symphony. Clarify Unfinished Symphony for this cycle, please. Queen of Cups. So we've had, we have the Queen of Pentacles, we have the Queen of Wands, and now we have the Queen of Cups. So this is about emotions. This is about emotional stability. Um, somebody is finding a, a level of groundedness in their emotions. Clarify Queen of Cups, please. Why is Queen of Cups here? Um, with strength. So your person, yeah, they're, they're harnessing strength right now in terms of their emotions and what it is that they're wanting um, with this unfinished symphony. Tell me more. Yeah, they see vic victory and a celebration here. So whatever this strength is, um, this whatever this person is holding back, um, they are they are working towards their victory, their celebration, um, a level of happiness here. Uh, we've got the passion, and then we've got the emotion here. So, what is that in regard to? What is this victory about? What is the Six of Wands victory? What 
reciprocity with clear communication. So we have the six of pentacles, which is giving and receiving and clear communication. So um, whatever the six of wands is, that victory, we've got two sixes here. Um, it's that the passion and then the groundedness of the abundance of the pentacles. Why is the three of cups here? Oof. Eight of pentacles in reverse. So um, somebody in the upright position, it's somebody who's grounded, working hard. Um, but perhaps, you know, maybe they're spending some Three of Cups can also indicate kind of partying, right? So maybe your person is um, out and about um, after coronavirus. Maybe their city or their state or their country is opened up and they're potentially out spending some pentacles and burning the midnight oil. So, um, yeah, interesting. Let's see. I think I know enough about your person here. Let's find out what your shared energy is. Tell me more about Between Worlds, please. Between Worlds. Shared energy in the cycle right now, Between Worlds. What is the shared energy for Between Worlds, please? Wholeness in reverse. Ace of Rods. We you had Ace of Rods on your side here. Um, where was it? Anyway, um, so wholeness in reverse is temperance. So something here is not tempered. It's um, a little bit upset. It is um, with the Ace of Rods energy. That's that spark of passion that moves you out of the temperance. So temperance in reverse is this darkness over here. It's the sadness. It's the feelings of feeling orphaned of, you know, trying to find your person, trying to find their strength, maybe um, drowning sorrows or feelings in drink or just refocusing their energies elsewhere. But temperance in reverse is this darkness here. The ace of rods is the passionate new beginning, right? It's it's shifting out of the darkness and into the light. You know, you can see that things are beginning to happen, that it's just dark and cloudy over here. And now we've got some confetti. You know, the flamingos gained its color again. That's that spark of a new idea. It's the spark of magic. It's the spark of energy that gets you moving forward. Uh, so that's, that's really, that's fantastic. And I think that that's, where is it? Here it is. So you had the Ace of Wands on your side, and it's also a shared energy. It's, it's the beginnings of manifestation here. So, um, all right. I'm just going to put these here for right now. Okay. So tell me more about breathe, please. Breathe. Five of Blossoms, which is the Five of Cups. That's uh, looking at the cups that have been lost. Okay, companionship, which is the chariot. Seven of blossoms. So there's some struggles here. Um, seven of cups, making decisions here. Choices, decisions. Um, the hearts are a little bit broken up. There's some sadness here. Uh, we have the five of blossoms. So that would be the five of cups. And kind of examining that, right? So you have here where it's super in focus. And then the seven of blossoms, as you move through that, it becomes faded. It becomes cloudy. It becomes misty. The clarity of the original five of blossoms, which is that pain, is beginning to become dim. And it becomes dim as you move into the ethers and breathe it out. 
So you begin to dissolve that energy through the breath, through meditation, through perspective. Okay. Now, then we have the four of blossoms, which is the four of cups. So we had here the unfinished symphony, which is that energy of leaving the gate open. So four of cups is three cups set off to the side in regular tarot with kind of the divine handing a cup to somebody. And this is that breathing energy is this four of blossoms where there's still a door open here. So, um, you know, be, being mindful of that because we've got the energy of companionship, which is the chariot, which here talks about how each person holds their own set of reins and they learn to work into collabor in collaboration with one another to share, to share their cranes, to steer their cranes to share the chariot of their heart, which is where it takes them upwards and onwards. So, you know, um, there's, with the breathe here, um, you are between worlds, there is a gate open, there is an unfinished symphony here, but there's also been a lot of pain that you're transmuting here through the breath, both of you. So don't think for a minute that um, just because you're feeling pain doesn't mean that somebody else isn't also feeling it. Um, you just may not be aware of it. So um, both of you are being guided into the energy of the breath and your inner light to transmute this. So that's going to do it for this side. We will go dig in more on the other side. But before we go, let's see what you guys would have to say to each other. We have Talk to Me Like I'm Someone You Love. This was um, advertised with cards on Amazon and it didn't come with cards. The cards were actually just pages in the book. So we are still going to use them because the messages are lovely. So Sagittarius, what would you like to say to your person for your soul contract, please? When you go on and on like that, I feel invisible to you. So maybe your person has a tendency to um, kind of, you know, speak their mind and then repeat it. Um, you know, reliving, rehashing things. Um, let's find out. What else would you like to say to your person, Saggy? Rather than just criticize me, can you tell me what you want in a more positive way? Interesting. So, um, so you feel like your person is criticizing you, that they're kind of casting some judgment. And um, you, it looks like you need this delivered to you in a more precise way, in a way that feels less critical and more directed towards self-realization in some way um but you're feeling a sense of and i see that because that makes sense to me because you're not for everyone so you're being you're being told to embrace your weirdness here and up here we have the i rather than just than just criticize me can you tell me what you want in a more positive way so you know maybe you're wearing polka dot pants with, um, a, I don't know, a multicolored striped shirt and your person doesn't love it. Um, and it comes out like, why are you wearing that? And you know, um, maybe that feels critical to you. So, um, I can understand why there's a sense of cri feeling criticized here because your part in this soul contract is for you to embrace your uniqueness here. So um, what does your person want to say to you, Sagittarius? What does your person want to say to you? What you are saying is worth listening to, but I am so totally flooded. I can't take in one more thing. I wish I could, but I can't. So your person is in overload right now. And that really makes sense with this strength card coming in for them. 
um, why your person could potentially, you know, if this is, you know, late nights and pentacles escaping because there's some extracurricular activities going on, um, they could potentially be, you know, numbing some things. So hold some space for your person because your person's in overload right now and, um, they want to hear what you have to say, but they don't have the space. They don't have the bandwidth to take one more thing on. And then um, their next message to you is all I'm feeling right now is your position. I need you to come back so I can relate to you, not your position. So you are, where was we, where was that seven of wands at? Seven of Wands is holding a position, Sagittarius. So you are really defending against something here. Um, and they need to be able to communicate with you um, more Six of Cups fashion, more in a way where there's a sense of innocence and love and history around that that can be tapped into. Um, so interesting. So that's what your person would say to you. So... We are going to take the rest of this over to Patreon. We will find out what your, we'll dig into the tarot of sexual magic. We'll find out, you know, what your issue is. Um, we'll find out where you're each standing in relation to that, what your hopes are for the future and so on. So if you'd like to join me over on Patreon, the link is in the description box. Otherwise, I will catch you guys on the next run. Thank you so much for being here. Hugs and kisses, you guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.